If you are hoping to vent your frustrations on our Issa friend here, I can only apologize. Few as they are now, it took us no time at all to track it down. That suits our purpose perfectly. Now we need to only wait for Ardbert to arrive. Weren't you two meant to be attending to the empty? We were indeed, and we've made a certain amount of progress. So we thought we might see how the rest of the world was getting on. From what we can gather, the answer is strangely. Right now, we think we can do more good here. It is heartening to have all present. Indeed. We will be glad of the additional hands should matters escalate. Our quarry is come. Huh. It seems I've lost this particular race. Well, though I suppose it's only fair. When we first met, it was I who outpaced you. Ravana, was it? But where are my manners? I wouldn't be here were it not for you, and I have yet to say a word of thanks. Poor fellow. He will be sorely missed. Very well. Let us forego this pretense. After all, it was never you that I needed to deceive. Yes, it is I, Elizabeth. Through your time in Emmet Selk's imitation of our home, I dare say you have gained a better understanding of my role since last we met. Not that it matters. We understand your role, Emissary, but not your goal. What is it that you seek to achieve? I seek to enact the will of the Convocation, of course. If it helps you to think of me as but another Asian, no different in nature or purpose from the rest, you are welcome to do so. Once, I would have said your goal was destruction alone. Now I understand that you fight for something you love, just as we do. Yet though we seem doomed to clash, I bid you consider Emmet Selk's final words. Remember that we once lived, he said. Had he not seen some glimmer of hope in our kind, I do not believe he would have spoken thus. None better understood your plight than he. His words must surely be worthy of your consideration. Emmet Selk. How very unlike you, to err so gravely. That one should stray at the end of so onerous a path is understandable, but I had thought you above such weakness. Mayhap you thought the same. 
Would that I had been present to offer correction. But I shall do so now, as is my duty, and return all to its proper course. As for you, look at yourselves. Look at your history. Look back one hundred short years to how your greatest warriors were undone. And now, at but a word from me, you raise your hands in answer like the puppets you are. Naught has changed. You fail and you fail and you learn nothing. Allow that which is most important to slip through your fumbling fingers like so many grains of sand, again and again and again, and you would remember us. You do forget yourselves. There is no common ground to be found between you and I, nor do I require any. I have my duty. Wait! Well, we have confirmed the identity of our foe, at least. And tis safe to say his objective is the rejoining. But we still have no idea how playing the part of a warrior of light will further his cause, nor why he would spur others to do the same. Another visit to the Tempest may shed some light upon these mysteries. Whether we are to exchange words or blows with Elidibus at our next meeting, the fact remains, we know too little. Ere our paths cross again, I would learn more of the world that once was, and of Elidibus himself. In this, we would be best served going directly to his home, much as Emmett Selk came to ours. Though I see the wisdom in thy suggestion, the Amorot we visited is but a phantom born of Emmett Selk's memory. I fear it will teach us little that we do not already know. I quite agree. Yet the ruins of the actual city remain unexplored. Given the vastness of the Tempest, I should not be surprised were there more such structures like to those in which the Ondo reside. A man after my own heart. Assuming we are all in agreement, then I suggest we first pay a visit to the Ondo. If anyone can tell us where more ruins are to be found, it is them. This structure must have served an important function. And here are yet more crystals. I too noted the crystal repository on the way. 
The Benthos seem to employ them in their spellcasting. In such vessels did the ancients preserve concepts. Ideal forms to be drawn upon in the act of creation. That so great an abundance should reside here lendeth credence to Ishtola's conclusion. This facility held great significance. It was they who first summoned Hydaelyn. Their discussion did seem to imply as much, yes. I cannot say I have ever heard of this Venar before. For a certainty, Emmet Selk never uttered the name, speak though he did, of the schism which Zodiac's advent wrought upon mankind. Some were of the viewpoint that his power must needs be restrained. And to that end, did they call forth she who would serve as his shackles. We now know that it was this Venar to whom they looked for leadership. And that this place, in all likelihood, served as their headquarters. The presence of such intimate records attests to that. I would hear what else they have to tell us. All of it. Did anyone see the source of the image? The device there? Then let us see what other secrets it holds.
Forgive me, but did that not strongly imply that Elidibus sacrificed himself to become Zodiac's heart? Seven hells. Then who or what are we dealing with? <laughs> 